Hello, everybody. It is the fourth of our four classes uh, of fundamentals. Um, as we've been talking, you know, I'll, I'll be introducing a few more things today, but hopefully we'll be practicing and I'll be talking a bit less or at least not having you stop while I talk. Um, just to review, though, I'll do a few things for review. Uh, if you think about the salute, as we said at the beginning, you know, it's the scholar and the, and the warrior, right? Tai Chi is all the thinking and then the fist, Tren. So uh, in Taiji Tren, uh, the basis of Taiji theory uh, is yin and yang, so the, the opposites. So as we do our warm-up practice, which is Master Yang Jin's part one wellness exercises, I'd like you to just think about some of the yin and yang, some of the opposites. So we'll be starting feet together, we'll open our feet, we'll, we'll go up, we'll go down, we'll have our legs bent, we'll have our legs straight, we'll be breathing in, we'll be breathing out. So look for the yin and yang in these wellness exercises. So I will mirror you. So we'll start our feet together. And uh, if you're mirroring me, this will be your left hand. Now we're going to step out uh, shoulder width and we will start with moving like waves breathe in and up breathe out and down that's one two three And finish, straighten your legs, put your hands by the side of your legs, and step closed. The second one is rock spreads its wings. Lift up your feet, heel, ball, toe, step, toe, ball, heel. Rock spreads its wings. Open as you breathe in, breathe out, and sink. Breathe in and open, breathe out, and down, that's two, three, and sink, and we'll stop at three, so drop your hands, breathe in as you straighten your legs, arms to the top, breathe out, down, palms in front of your hips, and by the side of your legs, Step closed. Number three, gazing at the moon. Step open, shoulder width. Open, arms up to about 45 degrees as you look up. Press down with both palms as you bend your legs. Two. Three. And down to the bottom as you breathe out. Straighten your legs, hands by the sides, and step closed. There we go. So welcome to Terry. And there are two Pierre de Frieses. Uh, if the people whose name is showing up as Pierre de Fries could just change them or let me see your picture, then I can just change them myself. Uh, and actually, one of the things that I forgot to do is I will uh, make Rita the co-host. So let's see who that is. I can see somebody. Ah, that is Rima, and she's changed it. Thank you, Rima. OK, so um, actually, I, I will continue marrying. We're going to do these exercises again. We'll do them. Hopefully, we'll, we'll have time at the end. Uh, so these three exercises for me are sort of the, the, the core of what this four class uh, little process has been about. Uh, so uh, when you think about what we've been doing in terms of footwork, so feet shoulder width apart. So first thing, it's since I can't see you, uh, you have to check yourself that your feet are shoulder width apart. So here's the test. Put your thumbs together. 
uh, point your, your pinky toes out. And if you can get down to your toes, you should be able to put your pinky toes on your second toe, that shoulder width. And I think most of us tend to have our feet too narrow and some of us have our feet too far apart. So that shoulder width apart. When we're sinking our weight, feel the bubbling well, so equal front and back, crotch rounded, left and right, and feel that as your legs bend and you straighten up. And then the posture. So as we do this exercise, all these exercises, think about keeping your head up. Think about dropping your elbows and sinking your shoulders. So for example, when we do this exercise, it's really easy to have our shoulders come up when we lift our arms up, but keep the shoulders down as the arms come up. Don't lift your shoulders as the arms come down. With this one, we want to keep our chest sinking. So keep your chest sinking even when the rock has opened its wings to here and you close. When you open, don't open too much. That's too much. Keep your chest absorbed your back slightly rounded, even when you're at the largest extent here. And all the time, keep your um, waist relaxed. Um, one of the things that we talked about uh, in all the classes is waist exercises. And so one of the waist exercises that we talked about, and we'll, we'll practice this, is when your waist goes forwards and back. So your chest or your solar plexus is going forwards and back. And in these exercises, we have that too. So when your arms come up, your chest is coming out or coming out. When you sink, your chest is going back. So chest out and chest back. And you'll see this in all three of them. See if you can find that chest movement as we do these three exercises. There are more exercises uh, in the two more sets of wellness exercises. And in those, actually, we do cloud hands. We do brush knee and push. And you can see there we have this horizontal. So go and look at those to exercise uh, other kinds of waist movement. Let's do this together again. Start feet together. Hands by the side. Nice posture. Express your spirit. Head up. Feel it light, energetic. Step open to the left. Now, moving like clouds. Breathe in and out, chest out and down. Move your waist back. Two. Think about your shoulders sinking all the time, even when you lift your arms, your shoulders are still sinking. That's three. And finish. Step closed. Rock opens its wings. Step open, shoulder width. Breathe in and open, but keep your chest sinking all the way. It's easy to sink your chest here. And your chest comes out a bit, but keep your back rounded at the top as you close. Breathe in. Breathe out. And finish. And step closed. And the third one, gazing at the moon. Open, down, waist goes back. Open and up, waist goes out to the front and sink. Open and up, look up. Press down and finish looking straight ahead. Look at the horizon, wide open gaze. Straighten legs, arms by the side, step closed. Good, there we are. Any questions about that? 
Nice to see you, Pat. Thanks for fixing the name. And Sharon is with us as well. Great to see you. And Marion. Yes, Marion. Um, where do we find these wellness exercises you mentioned? You will find them in an email that I will send to everybody after class. Okay. I will send a link to a playlist that has uh, all three of the wellness exercises. They're on YouTube. Um, so that's the easiest way to answer your question. You said there were others. Yes. Like hands yes. And there are there are three sets questions. of wellness exercises. Oh. Um, I will send a link to a YouTube playlist that has all three. All three sets. All three Thank sets. You. Yes. So there's part one, part two, and part three. And okay. each part has three exercises. So this was okay. part one with okay. three exercises in it. Thank you. All right. Okay. So let's do our standing practice. So we'll start uh, with the parallel stance. So start with your feet pointing to the front, shoulder width. Check that your feet are pointing straight forward. The way to know what straight forward is, it's the center of your um, heel or the center of your leg and your second toe. So that line is your center line. You can also be a bit wider if you like. And actually, as you practice over time, you might find that it's nice to go wider. You can sink more deeply. I'll do shoulder width apart. So let's check everything. We'll, we'll use standing practice to review the footwork. So weight over the bubbling well. So weight forward back and crotch rounded so that you're not on the inside or the outside of your feet. Everything is straight down. Body setting, so your torso is set, your hip bone, your ah, tailbone is between your heels. Slight tilt forward, arms up. Now, if it's too hard for you to keep your arms up, it's fine. Just hold them down in front of your body, in front of your tummy. This is what Kelly Hong Williams is doing at Qigong Boot Camp in January. She calls holding a bag of apples. You can practice like this too or just drop your arms completely. So the first thing about standing practice is body shape. So feel your waist relaxing, your hips are dropping straight down, your lower body is heavy. Now go to the other end of your spine, feel your head pushing up, light, energetic. Feel your shoulders sinking, elbows dropping, and your chest is absorbed. Your back slightly rounded. Do this by pulling out at the elbows. So that's body shape, your posture. The second part of standing practice is breathing. So breathe into your abdomen. So as you breathe in, let your breath move your tummy out. As you breathe out, let it come back in again. If that's hard, just keep adjusting your body. Perhaps you're tilted too far back so that you are stiffening up or you're tilted too far forward. Perhaps you're working too hard with your arms. Your arms are too stiff. If, relax your arms, drop your arms if you need to. The third part Third reason to do standing practice is to calm the mind. So as you do your posture training, your breath, eventually your mind will start getting calm. And ultimately, one of the 10 essentials is that you move your body while your mind remains calm. So we want to have our mind calm in our moving practice too, but let's start by doing it here. Okay, relax. So now let's do standing practice as a way of reviewing our other stances. So let us start with a bow stance. So I'm gonna work on either side of my yellow line rather than the blue line. And you'll see in a moment why. So I'm gonna step forward. If you're mirroring me, this, your left leg is at the back. So the back heel is 45 degrees away from the moving dis direction, which is the front. 
So let's start. We have weight over the bubbling well for both feet. Crotch rounded, one foot forward, one foot to the corner. Check your torso settings. So you're leaning forward slightly. Check that your tailbone is centered between your heels, that you're not too far over, particularly to the front leg. Move your leg back, your hips to the center. Front leg is bent, but your knee is behind your toes. Back leg is straight, but not locked. 60% on the front, 40%, uh, sorry, yes, yeah, 60% on the front, 40% on the back. We're gonna change, we're gonna do it on the other side. So I'm gonna shift my weight back, pick up the front foot, put it down next to the back foot. I'm going to change my feet. So the back, back foot to the corner, the length of the bow stance, long enough that I can put my foot out and bring it back, and shoulder width, go forward. The same checks for the footwork that we had before. Now let's think about our body shape. Head up, so pushing up, the top of your head, shoulders down, elbows down. Sink your chest, round your back slightly, and relax your waist. So this is a bow stance, forward bow stance on that side. Now let's change again. Step back and step forward with the other foot. I'm going to change, I'm going to do it this way so you can see me from the side. So this is the stance that we were in. So this is 60 on the front, 40 on the back. We can also do it 40 on the front, 60 on the back. So let's review this bow stance. The feet are the same. Direction, back one to the corner, front one to straight. Length is the same, width is the same. Torso setting, tilted forward but not as much. Tailbone centered between the heels. Check your body shape. Head up, sink your waist. So this is the spine, up and down, relaxed. In other words, everything's opening. Open left, right by pulling out at the elbows. And sink your shoulders, drop your elbows. And we're going to change, shift back your weight, change your footwork, step out into a bow stance. Let's go into the forward bow stance to begin with. Shift back. So now what I'd like you to check is check that your crotch is rounded. Look at your back knee. Is your back knee and your back toe in a line? Is your crotch rounded at the front? Is your tailbone on the line between your feet? And here, let's practice a little bit of breathing. So just see if you're not used to this posture, breathing will be a little harder here, which is a reminder to come back and practice this again later. Five more seconds and change. So pick up the front foot, put it down out to 45 degrees, step out the front foot, go into the forward bow stance. So this is the one that we did before. So I'm tilted forward, my chest is square to the front. Now I want to lift my torso vertical. In order to release my back, I have to open my hips to the corner slightly. So when I'm in the forward bow stance here, my hips are slightly open, but when I, have to, when I tilt my torso vertical, I have to open my hips a bit more. And so my chest 
is actually more to the corner, perhaps even a little bit more than corner. But I'm looking forward in the direction of my front foot. Feel push and support, 60% on the front, 40% on the back. Shoulders down, elbows down. Sink your chest, round your back. Head up. So this one, your neck will be at uh, maybe a little bit of an angle because of your chest. And change. Bring back the front foot. Shift your weight onto what is now the new back foot. Step out. Start with the forward bow stance. Tilted forward so that your torso angle is the same as your back leg. Now we're going to make our torso vertical and we're going to open our hips to the corner slightly. More so that the hips are now pointing at the corner. 60% on the front, more or less, 40% on the back. And focus on breathing. Breathe deeply. Five more seconds. And come out. Just step forward, feet parallel, and stand up. Okay. So there we are. So let us do the same. We'll use standing practice to review our empty stances now. So shake them out, and now we'll do our empty stances. So again, We've the usual, as you know, for our stances, we've got a, the direction that we're moving in or where our opponent is in. Usually at least one foot is pointed in that direction when we're standing parallel stance, both feet are in that direction. But in the bow stance and the empty stance, the back foot is 45 degrees away from our moving direction. So let us adopt this posture. Back foot to the corner, sink. Your hip is over your back foot. Your front leg is straight, ball touch. Lean forward slightly so that you can get 30%. Feel, push and support between, from front and back. We're only gonna do a minute here because this is mostly weight on a back leg and we need to work our way up to this. So here, just feel your body shape? Do you have that stretch up and down your spine? Do you have the stretch left and right across your back as your arms make a big circle and you feel the surface of the balloon pressing out? Okay, so let's change. Shift your weight back, bring the front foot to the next to the back foot, shift your weight, step out, ball touch. Empty stance, ball touch, 70% on the back, 30% on the front. Torso tilted forward at the hip crease slightly. Feet are on either side of the center line. And breathe. And change again. Now we're going to do heel touch. So now we are, again, weight over the back foot. The back leg is bent. You can bend the back leg as much as is comfortable. It's not like bow stance where you want to keep your knee behind your toes. Here you can sink it more if that's comfortable for you right now. 30% on the front foot and the whole heel is pressing straight down. In the form, when we do this, usually our chest is open to the corner. So I tend to end up with my chest more to the corner in heel touch, but you're still looking forward. Feel your head pushing up and your whole body hanging from your neck, shoulders, everything else down. 
and change to the other side, heel touch. Tilt slightly at the hip crease. Feel push and support. Most of your weight, 70% on the back foot, but 30% on the front foot. So you should be able to push backwards and forwards. Slight tilt forward in the direction that the front foot is going, in the moving direction. But you want your head up, waist relaxed, back rounded, chest absorbed, shoulders down, elbows down. After a while, I forget about that one. So I have to go back and drop my shoulder blades and step forward and come out and there we are so that's our empty stance so we've practiced parallel stance bow stance and empty stance we're going to be doing our movement uh the, the various kinds of transitions and steps that we've learned but what I'd like to do is to just take a moment here and make sure I do it now, because if I leave it till the end, there's going to be a rush. I just want to show you a summary of what I've covered in these four classes. Um, I, you will be getting an email. Uh, you'll actually be getting a couple of emails. Um, and I will include this slide deck so that you'll be able to, if, for, for those of you who like to look at words rather than hear words or rather than look at people, uh, you'll have that option too. So let me just uh, share my screen with you. So there we go. Right. So is the sh share screen working? Okay. Thank you. It's working. Very good. So. So the the martial salute. Uh, you remember I said there was a poem. So here is the poem. The warrior and the scholar come together. Go forth into battle, united as one. We have no weapons and beg forgiveness if we are forced to use our power and we dispel all evil. Taiji. Uh, Taiji comes from Wuji, and Wuji is the, uh, essentially the, the void, the nothing, the ultimate nothing before there was anything. And then from that came Taiji, which is the great or universal everything. And you can see that Taiji is represented with the yin yang symbol. And in the Taiji classics, there is a saying that Taiji, being born of Wuji, is the mother of Yin and Yang. So that is the encapsulation of Taiji theory. I've been talking about the progression of study, understand the reason. We've talked a little bit about theory, not much. Um, I've mentioned the four things that we cover when we do our stance uh, in terms of hips, chest, shoulders, head are four of the 10 essential principles. The second part, which is where most of our work has been, has been know, the, know your body, comes in self-practice uh, and then with somebody else. And it comes in still and moving. We've essentially just done self-practice, but both still and moving. We haven't done applying the learning because we don't have an opponent handy. Know your body. There are five things that you've heard me talk about. Here is the list, foot, body, practice method. Those are the ones we focused on. And then hand technique and gaze. I talked a little bit about hand technique and gaze last week, but that come to a, a, a traditional hand form class and you'll learn all about those things. Let's break down foot technique. There are three areas, standing, moving, and rooting. So far today, in the first half hour, we've done standing. Second half hour, we'll do moving. And rooting actually applies to both. When we think about standing, here are the things that I've been saying over and over again in the last three classes. Um, most stances, uh, the same thing, there are three things that apply for all of them. We have this combination of straight and diagonal with the foot direction, weight over the bubbling well, and crotch rounded. That is always true. Then there are three things that vary from stance to stance. So foot location, width and length. So for example, in a bow stance, uh, we've, we're shoulder width apart, but in an empty stance, we're center line two sides. So that varies. Uh, the shape. So um, in bow stance, the front leg is bent, but not over the, over, the, um, over the toes. In empty stance, you can bend the back leg more, but the front one in this case is straight. In the bow stance, going forward, the back leg is straight. 
And then the weight distribution, you know, 60, 40, 40, 60, 70, 30, those are things that we need to know for each of the stances. Moving, which is when we're going to move into uh, in a little bit. Um, the three things to remember is we move evenly and smoothly in Young Family Tai Chi Chuan, like a cat. Uh, we don't lift our feet too high or drag them. And the sequence of putting down the parts of the foot are always the same. If we go forward, which is what we focused on um, in, in these four classes, it's heel ball toe bend knee. Rooting, two parts to rooting, push and support and central settle down. It's easier to see central settle down when we do um, you know, uh, moving steps and we'll review those. Body technique, there are two parts, body setting. So you heard me talk about centralizing your hips. So when you're in a bow stance, you want to make sure that your tailbone is between your heels. When you're in a bow stance, depending on which stance you're in, so for example, here in a bow stance, your torso is tilted here. When you're in an empty stance, it's also tilted. But depending on your stance, it's perhaps not as much. And then body shape. Here are those four things that I keep talking about over and over again. and I'm not going to review them here again. Practice method. So there are two important parts of practice methods. One is relaxing. So relaxing is really about Tai Chi energy. And Tai Chi energy is, it's soft, but it's also strong. Uh, it's springy, it's not tight or stiff. So when um, Master Yang Lu Chan in, introduced uh, Young Family Tai Chi uh, back in the 19th century, it was actually, before it was called Tai Chi Chuan, it was called Cotton Fist because it was, you know, it was like steel inside cotton. And the way we do that is we open the joints and tendons. So all these four things that we've talked about, that is actually practicing relax. Waste is how you move, how you take the energy from the bottom part of the body to the top part, how you control your energy release. So far, we've talked about horizontal and vertical. Uh, we'll review those in a minute, but we're also going to today introduce mixed. We haven't done everything, so we haven't done all the stances, all the postures, we haven't done all the transitions, we haven't done all the waist movements, we've done just enough to do the first section with. So there's a lot more to learn. Uh, there's a lot more for all of us to do. If you want more after this, uh, Nancy Laoshi, and essential principles starting January. More practice in the basics. Uh, Didi Hilke has done 42 basics videos and the, the playlist will be included in the email as will the links for all the classes. Um, I'll be starting a first section class in January and Marion will be doing the practice for that class also in January. You will be getting two. This class is finished. Um, Hopefully, relatively quickly, you'll get an email asking you to complete a survey. So please tell me what worked and what didn't. And then you'll get an email with links to um, all sorts of things uh, that I've been discussing now. So that is the review, and that's plenty of talking. So let's start practicing again. So we're going to do our waste practice now. Use a chair. I'm going to use a chair. If you have a chair, bring it. Um, I would suggest a nice hard chair like this, a dining room chair. Uh, a swivel chair isn't as good because it doesn't keep your hip in the same place. If you want to practice standing up, of course, you can do that too. Sink, uh, bend your knees. A transition for you is actually if you have a chair and you're ready to start standing up, stand over your chair. That will actually lock your hip in place and you'll be able to stand and move your chest without moving your hips. So that's something to work to or try today. OK, so let's review what we've done. Oh, hang on. Uh, Sharon has a question. Sharon. Yeah, yes. So uh, the, the, they have the 10 essential class, right? Is, um, is uh, for everybody, I mean, there's no requirement that because I need practice Tai Chi before or not. Oh, okay. Yes, thank you, Sharon. Um, so what uh, I didn't want to go into, but I'm so glad you asked. So the recommendation is that 
you have done the hand form, the traditional 103 form or 108 form, depending on how you count, before you do the 10 essentials, because the way Nancy Lausche teaches it is she refers to the hand form sequence for examples. So if you haven't done the whole of the traditional form yet, I would suggest waiting to do the essential form. Uh, and the, there are two things you can do uh, rather than do the essential form. You can start with the first section uh, or do DD's um, basics, but um, you know it, it's up to you. Oh, okay, so another question I, uh, I want to ask is uh, for the hand movement. So before, in, uh, is a hand should be if, uh, in front of the, uh, your body or a little bit over? I, I saw you always like this. I mean, when you do the mm -hmm. empty step and kind of at the kind of at the angle, so yeah. not, not for forwarding, but sometimes you are have forwarding like the empty step like this. So which one I should I should practice? So I'm not sure, let me try and answer your question. I'm not sure I understand. So uh, let me answer it and then you can correct me. So my my arms are in front of my body, mm -hmm. hands about chest height. So not up like this, hands are about chest height. Mm -hmm. My arms are open, so they're like a big circle. So if I bend over, it's this shape. It's not like this, it's as round a shape as you can make. And the fingertips are pointed to each other. The hands, you can see my, my hands are somewhat open and it's about fist width between my fingertips. Yes, but I'm asking, I saw uh, you kind of, uh, the, the hand look at like this angle, I mean, kind of like angle. Okay. So when you do the, so sometimes it looks like you are straightforward. Yes. So I'm not sure which one is I yes. correct one. So my goal is always to keep my hands in front of my chest. If I turn my chest, my hands will move. So if I'm here, if I move my chest, my hands will move. But relative to my chest, my hands are always in the same place. But when I saw you do the empty step, I sometimes I saw you actually a little bit at some yes. angle. Yes, and that is because when I was in, for example, if I'm in ball touch, my chest is square to the front. When I'm in heel touch, when we do the form, actually, our chest is open. And so my hands are in front of my chest. My hands are pointing in the same direction as my chest. So that's why it looks like my hands are to the side. But it's really a question of where my chest is. My hands follow where my chest goes. So that means if you touch on the ball, uh, that'd be a little bit at some angle. But if you touch so, at the heel, maybe on the front, it's depend on where the weight it depends on, on your it, foot. Let's let's talk about this after class. Okay. 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 So let us do the waist practice. So. I am going to hold my hands in front, but you can cross your arms if you like, if you, if you feel more comfortable that way, but I'll hold my hands out here. So if you're mirroring me to the left, to the right, to the left, to the right, we'll just do two. Now we'll go side to side. So in these directions. To the left, to the right, to the left, to the right. Now I'm going to go my chest out and back. So out and back, out and back. I'm not moving my arms. My hands are where they all are stationary in space. I'm just moving my chest. Now I'm going to turn my chest open a little bit to the left, if you're mirroring me. Now I'm going to go sideways in this direction. So to the one side, to the other side. One side, other side. Come to the center, 
come to this side. So now I'm pointing to the right if you're mirroring me. I'm going to go in those directions. Out, back, to the one side, to the other side. Come to center, open up again. Now I'm point opening to the left. Now I'm going to go chest out and back in this direction that my chest is pointing. Out and back, out and back. Come to center, out and back, out and back. Okay, so drop your arms if you wish. What we say when we practice is we, we practice continuously without interruption, which means we want to keep moving in a circle. And so when I went side to side here, I went to the side and then stopped. And I went to the side and stopped and came back. I don't want to do that. So try this. Go down to the side. Down and up to the side. Down and up. Down and up. Now we'll go over the top. Over and over to the side over. Now make a big circle. To the right and down. Go to the other side. Start off going to the right, top, to the left, down. So that's a way to not go just in a straight line. Now the other one when we were going this way, how do we fix this? How do we make this continuous? So Turn your chest open, shift to the side, make a big circle there, come back across the diagonal, make a big circle on this side, back across the diagonal, circle, back, circle, back. Now we'll go reverse direction, so we'll go out, circle, out, circle, out, circle, out, circle, and relax. So we don't have time to do as much of this as I would like, but let me just briefly summarize what I just did. So this is my chest. So what we've done is I've moved my chest like this. I've moved my chest like this. Moved my chest like this. I've turned it to the corner and it's gone this way. Turned it to the corner and gone this way. Now, what we did today that was new is we went round. We went round like this. Round this way. And then the last thing I did was turn to an angle, went out, came around, went across, turned around, went across. And you can see that the path that this box is following is like a big figure eight that's lying flat. So it's going in a big figure eight. And so that's why when we mix horizontal and vertical, so we're, we're doing this movement, but we're also doing this movement, we often call it a figure eight. So that is our figure eight movement. So try practicing that. Uh, when you get time. So I'm going to move on. Yes, Marion. Question. question though before you move on. When you do the um, the circles yeah. and the um, figure eight, I was watching your body and I was paying attention to my own and I was, yes, I was moving my chest, but I was also moving my arms a lot. So, yes. But you weren't. I mean, your arms were moving, but yes. they remained I don't know, you just look more contained. And I'm wondering, do you need to kind of move your chest within the circle of your arms kind of thing without? Or, I've never I, thought of it that way. I mean, I <laughs> maybe one way you could try it, I, I don't, have, don't have to sit down, is just start by holding, just hold, or just hold your, hold your hands. Right. Uh, or actually, this is even more rigid. And just try practicing. This is why we practiced it like this. It just, you know, your arms are in front, but your, your arms are not going to move much relative to your chest. And so, so that gives you a way of then being ready to get into this position. So if I'm like 
moving a lot. I'm actually maybe bending for my waist a little too much. I've got my whole torso into the circle rather than yes. just yes. chest and the ribs yes. below the chest. Yes. What, okay. what, you know, I think we, uh, I suspect that all of us, uh, you know, you know, when you watch Master Young Jun, he, you hardly see any waist movement at all, but you know he's doing it. So I think as as you progress, you will feel it, but you might not actually show very much of it. Okay, so let us do some stepping. So let us begin. Uh, bow stance. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sort of be with my back to you more because that way as you face me as you and I'm, I'm imagining I'm facing the camera hopefully it'll be slightly easier to follow let me know in the feedback if it is or it isn't okay so we're going to do a bow stance we're going to change we're going to walk forward in a bow stance so shift back your weight slightly open the left toe step through bow stance open the front toe move the weight in the direction of the toe step through and end in a bow stance now let's do walking in an empty stance so i'm starting in an empty stance what you can't see is i'm ball touch pick up my foot put my heel down foot to 45 degrees move my weight in the direction of my toes Bring through my foot, ball touch. Pick up my foot, put down the heel out to the corner, step through, ball touch. I can do the same thing if I'm doing heel touch. So I'm starting with heel touch. Now, because I've got most of my weight on the back foot, I don't have to lift my front foot. I just turn it open, 45 degrees, shift my weight, keep your crotch rounded step through heel touch open the front toe to the corner step through heel touch now we're going to do uh two steps start with bow stance i'm in a bow stance uh gonna be here gonna take two steps so, and as you recall from last week, the middle step is going to be one line, two sides, center line, two sides. Shift weight back slightly, open the front foot, step through the front foot. This is going to be a transition step. One line, two sides, heel touch, toe to the corners, keep moving, step through, now step wider to a bow stance. And again, and we'll do it with the other foot in front. There. Open. Step through center line, two sides. Heel touch. Keep moving. Step through shoulder width and put your weight forward. Now, as you get to the end, feel push and support so that you are stopping your movement and sinking down. That's central settle down. The next thing that we did last week is. We talked about changing from a bow stance to an empty stance and an empty stance to a bow stance. I'll do that uh, from the side, I think. So uh, I'll start here. I'm in a bow stance. I'm going to come into an empty stance. So I shift my weight forward, bring the back foot in, center line two sides, shift back. Push back with the ball and then turn over onto the heel. Do you remember from last week when you're going to end on the heel, you push back with the ball. Step out, shoulder width with the front foot. Shift your weight forward. We're in a bow stance. We're going to do another one. This time we're going to end with a bow ball touch. Step in, push back with the heel and change to the ball. One of the things which uh, I want to underline is when we change from ball to heel, it's not just a question of rocking forward. Uh, when I'm on the heel and I'm going to change to a ball, I pick up my foot, 
and put down the ball. When I'm on the ball and I want to change to the heel, I pick up my foot and put down the heel. It's not rocking backwards and forwards. What you can do for yourself is try that. What I find, if I just, if I, if I'm in a, let's say I'm in a good empty stance ball touch, and I just move to my heel, my butt sticks out too much. I need to actually move my weight forward just a smidgen to get a good stance. Likewise, if I'm in a good empty stance heel touch, and I, move, and I just roll forward, which you should not do. Don't roll, roll forward. Now you can see my, I don't have 70% in the back anymore. I'm too far forward. So that's why you want to pick up and put down. Let's do this on the other side. So we'll start here. So I'm in a bow stance. Step closed. Center line to sides. We're going to finish ball touch. So push back on the heel, pick up the foot, ball touch. Go into bow stance, step wider, heel ball toe, bend knee. Now we're going to do heel touch. So step in, center line to sides, push back with the ball and end up on the heel. And again, step wider, heel ball toe, bend knee. Come in, push back with the ball, end on the heel. And again, step wider into a bow stance. Step in, push back with the heel, end up in the ball. OK, so those are the transitions that we did last time. I think we will have time to assemble all of these into a sequence. There's just an infinite number of sequences. There's one more thing I want to show you, particularly since we've almost all of us got very limited space. If you're just doing your, you know, you're, you're doing your bow stance walking uh, and you're, you know, you run out of space, so you want to turn around. So I want to show you how to turn around. Um, uh, and this, this, is, uh, this one's for Sharon. So how do we turn around? So we're in a, from a bow stance to a bow stance. Up. I'm going to start here. So I'm in a bow stance, perform a bow stance. I'm not going to worry with my arms first. I'm going to shift my weight back, all the way back. So if I've got my left foot forward, shift all my weight back onto the right. Now I'm going to turn my left toe through 135 degrees. I'm going to sit back my weight, all my weight back onto my left foot, bring in my right foot, step wider, and go forward. So let's go back. So I've got my right foot forward, shift back my weight, turn my right foot through 135 degrees, shift my weight, all my weight back onto my right leg, shift, pivot on the ball, pick up the left foot, step out, shoulder width, heel ball toe, bend knee. Let's do that again. So, we're in a bow stance, left foot forward. Shift weight onto the right foot all the way. Pivot on the left heel, 135 degrees. Sit back your weight, pivot on the right ball. Pick up the right foot, step out shoulder width, heel ball, toe, bend knee. We're back in a bow stance. Right leg forward, shift back. Turn the right leg, 135 degrees, sit back, pick up, step out to a bow stance. Okay, so that's how we turn around. So what I'd like to do now is just practice with you. I'll just, we'll just go through a couple of these transitions just to show you some of the things you can do. And I hope that when you get time, you will just start practicing these transitions. And as I was as quoting our teacher, Martha Young-Jin, last week, just, you, you just have to do this 20 minutes a day for three months. That's all it takes. Um, and, you know, then, then you'll have the basics, right? So um, let's start. So I'm going to have my back to you. So I'm going to start in shoulder width, both feet pointing forwards. I'm just going to have my arms in front of my chest. You can have them in uh, hold a bag of apples posture if you prefer, 
or you can just drop them if it gets too much like hard work. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change from this stance, which is parallel stance, into a bow stance. So I'm going to shift my weight slightly to the left, open my right foot, shift my weight onto my right foot, and step out into a bow stance. Now I'm going to turn the direction 90 degrees. So to do that, I shift my weight back slightly, turn my left foot through 45 degrees, shift all my weight onto the left foot, bring in the right foot, step it out, heel ball toe, bend knee. So now I'm in this forward bow stance. Now remember, there are other bow stances too, so I could shift back my weight. So here I am, 60% on the back. 40% on the front, or and go forward again. So now let's do that big turn. Shift my weight back onto the left foot. Turn my right foot through 135 degrees. Set my weight all the way back onto the right foot. Pivot on the left ball, pick up the left foot, step wide, heel ball, toe, bend knee. Just check if you're in a good bow stance, check that your back foot is pointing to the corner, front foot is in the moving direction. Now we're going to change our moving direction from the, this side through 90 degrees, and we're going to end up, oh, let's do a empty stance, heel touch, shift back weight halfway, turn the front foot through 45 degrees, shift your weight onto the left foot, pick up the right foot, step out center line two sides, Heel touch. Now we're going to turn from this direction through 90 degrees again. Pivot on the right heel. Shift your weight. Let's end up empty stance ball touch. Now we're in empty stance ball touch. Let's go to a bow stance. So we're going to step wider, pick up, shift back your weight slightly, pick up the front foot, step wider, heel ball toe. Then knee, empty stance. Let's go into a heel touch. Push back with the ball, heel touch. Go into a bow stance. Step wider, heel ball, toe, then knee. Let's do another bow stance. Open the front foot to the corner. Move your weight in the direction of the front foot. Step through shoulder width, heel ball, toe, Finish, push and support, feel the springiness. Let's do another one. Open the front toe. Feel that your crotch is open, knees and toes are in a line. Move your weight in the direction of the front foot. Step through, heel ball toe, bend knee. Going to reset a little bit. Ah, oh, let's do another empty stance. So Bring the back foot in, center line, two sides. Going to end up in a heel touch, so push back with the ball. Land, pick up the foot, land on the heel. Step wider, bow stance. Heel, ball, toe, bend, knee. Huh, we haven't actually done the step through one, so let's take two steps here. Open the front foot to the corner. We'll take two steps, end in a bow stance. So center line, two sides, right foot to the corner. Move through, step left foot out, shoulder width, and bow stance. And let's finish facing to the screen again. Shift back your weight, turn the left foot through 90 degrees. Sit back your weight, pick up the right foot, put it down next to the left foot. So there you are. So that was, you know, four minutes of just doing one movement after another. Uh, and I suspect that for some of you that felt familiar. Show of hands, did that ring any bells for anybody? Yes, yes, one, two, yes, three, maybe four, five, yeah, okay. And so, yeah, that was in fact the first section. That is the footwork of the first section of the traditional form. We just didn't do the arm movements. We just did the footwork. And so you can do 
other variations of the footwork. You know, we always turn to one direction. When you practice, you can turn to the other direction. So that's uh, our practice uh, for today. And regrettably, um, we're at the end of our time together. Uh, thank you so much for allowing me to practice with you and learn with you. I hope you've learned something. I've learned a lot. Um, it's really been great. Um, you look out for the survey. I really appreciate any feedback you have and look out for the email with all the resources. I will stay behind after class if anybody has any more questions. But for now, let us close class here. And we will do the salute. Thank you, everybody. Have very happy holidays and a wonderful new year. Thank you, Pierre. You too.